Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and in this video, we are going to test the blood glucose impact of sprouted grain bread and whether or not it's all right to eat on a low carb lifestyle. I have done a number of reviews of breads that either claim to be keto or low carb or keto friendly, and I'll link to that playlist right up here. But in each of those videos, I got one or more comments asking me what would be my blood glucose response to a sprouted grain bread. Now I've had Ezekiel bread before and I can't say that I'm a super big fan, but the last time I was at Costco, I saw this Angelica Bakehouse bread. It's a seven grain sprouted grain wheat bread. Looking at the macros, we have 12 grams of total carbohydrates, three grams of fiber for a net nine grams per slice. So for non-keto people, that would probably be considered fairly low carb. For keto people, eh, not so much. In terms of ingredients, we have sprouted whole grains, wheat berries, quinoa, millet, oat groats. I've never heard of a groat before. Oat groats. Barley, rye berries, amaranth. Water, whole wheat flour, wheat gluten, agave syrup, yeast, oat fiber, and 2% or less of salt, prune juice concentrate, molasses, and natural flavor. So this is certainly not keto. I'm not claiming that it's keto, and they're not claiming that it's keto. My interest here is purely to see, does sprouting the grains change the blood glucose impact of consuming a bread? So to keep this equivalent with my other bread tests, I am going to eat two slices of this bread. One slice will be untoasted, the other will be toasted, so I can give you my feel on texture and taste. I will not be adding any fat or anything else to these. I'm not going to be making a sandwich in this part of the video because if you've seen my video on resistant starch, you know that fat has a significant blunting effect on blood glucose. So I want to test this just straight up. I will be testing this with both the Levels Continuous Glucose Monitor System as well as the Keto Mojo. I took my blood glucose and ketone readings with the Keto Mojo this morning, and blood glucose was 80, ketones were 1.3. For what it's worth, I have done a number of different snapshots. I do it a sample about once a week, where I take a blood glucose reading with the Keto Mojo, and then I take a reading with my continuous glucose monitor. And with the exception of situations where my blood glucose is rapidly changing, you know, like with the Dawn effect, they're always within five points of each other. So pretty consistent results there. I will be testing my blood glucose over a two hour period with the level system. Now I'm in a completely fasted state and I wanted to make sure that I was past the dawn effect. So I waited until my blood glucose was stable for at least an hour. And I've been right around 88 to 90 for the better part of the last three hours. So I think we're good to go. I've got a slice already in the toaster as I eat this plain bread here. First off, I really enjoy the texture on this. Back in my pre-keto days, when I would eat a, a wheat bread, I wanted it really, really hearty. Something that would stand up to a chunky peanut butter and strawberry preserves. I just made myself suddenly salivate when I said that. And this is like that. This is a, this is a hearty bread. And the flavor, I really enjoy as well. This is the sort of bread that I miss on keto. Now, I'm not going to make you watch me eat this whole thing, but just trust that I'm eating the whole thing. And now we have our toasted piece. Again, this is really good. It does have me really, really wanting butter rather badly. Also, I think based on the texture of that first bite, if I were to make a sandwich out of this, you know, a thicker sandwich, I really think that my gums right behind my bottom teeth would probably take a beating from this. It's, uh, once toasted, this texture, does get uh, a little bit gritty on the surface. So having just finished two slices of that bread, I can tell you I enjoyed the first bite a lot more than the last bite. It's one of those things where you bite into it and you're like, oh, I remember what bread tastes like now. This was great. And by the time you get finished, you realize that while well, bread is all right, it's really kind of that stuff in between the two slices that I enjoy. Anyhow, I am gonna be back in two hours and we can see what the impact was on my blood glucose. In my experience, whenever I have a blood glucose spike, it peaks right about the one hour mark. When your blood sugar is changing rapidly, you are gonna see a difference between a blood glucose monitor like the Keto Mojo and a continuous glucose monitor like the levels here. 
Typically, the blood glucose monitor leads by about 15 minutes. So at the one hour mark, I took a reading and it was 136. And about 15 minutes later, I took a reading with a continuous glucose monitor and you can see pretty close at 134. Now, as you look at the output from the level software, you can see this did not do me any favors, this sprouted grain bread. I went up a total of 46 points and two hours later, I am still 15 points higher than my baseline, so I haven't fully recovered. And in terms of all the foods that I've eaten since applying the, the patch here, this is very near the bottom in terms of quality. I mean, the next worst food on the list, according to the scale, is the boiled potatoes that I had doing the resistant starch test. Now, the two questions that you may have right now is, well, how would this sprouted grain bread compare to, say, Wonder Bread? And I'm not going to eat Wonder Bread. I got to believe it's going to be worse. And if it's worse than 46 points, it's something I just don't want to have. The next question you might have is, did, similar to my resistant starch experiments, the addition of fat blunt the glucose response? And the answer was absolutely. And I did more than one test. So here we have a cheeseburger that I did on the angelic bread. And you'll see that I only went up 15 points. And my peak was at 98. I also did a bratwurst on the angelic bread along with a side salad. Glucose, again, only up 15 points. And don't ask me what this is a picture of. It looks, I, I can't even make it out. Somehow I must have been aiming the camera wrong or something when I recorded this. But I had the angelic bread, I toasted it, buttered it up, and put a little Flavor God cinnamon roll seasoning on it, and only went up 14 points. So this morning I took my blood ketones and blood glucose readings again with the Keto Mojo, and the results, awfully close to yesterday. Still in ketosis, rocking a 1.3. Blood glucose, smidge higher than yesterday, but I also measured two hours later than I did yesterday. So I'm still kind of on that morning dawn effect upswing, I think. In terms of my takeaways from this little experiment, first off, once again, we see that fat blunts a glucose response. I saw the exact same effect in all of my resistant starch experiments, and here it is again. Additionally, I experienced no inflammation over the course of eating it over a week with you know the various sandwiches or eating it plain like I did yesterday. I did, however, experience inflammation eating that Live Smart low carb bread. So that leads me to believe that the inflammation that I was feeling after eating that bread was likely due to the soybean oil and not the gluten. So at least for me, that's good information if I'm making any sort of a recipe, a keto bread that calls for vital wheat gluten. Now the bigger question becomes, would I recommend sprouted grain bread to you? And the answer is, it kind of depends on what you're doing from a dietary and lifestyle standpoint. If you are opposed to wheat in any form, in any preparation, then obviously this is not a bread for you. If you consider yourself a fairly strict, clean keto person, this clearly from the ingredients is not keto and is not for you. If you are a diabetic, this is sort of I think a bit of a gray area, and I'm gonna refer you to an article, I'll link to it down in the description, from Healthline. In that article, they made it sound like a sprouted grain bread is diabetic friendly. I'll let you read the article and make up your own mind. The article also discusses some of the other benefits of sprouting, including increased nutrients, decreased anti-nutrients, and improved digestibility due to the increased enzymes and decreased lectins. So I think as a non-diabetic, who's maybe not adhering to an especially strict low-carb diet, then I think this probably is a good bread, whether it's angelic or Ezekiel, as long as it's sprouted. So what about someone like me, someone who is in keto maintenance and has been doing keto long enough that he or she is fat adapted or metabolically flexible? Would it be safe to eat this bread? I think yes, and I say that with a little bit of an asterisk next to it. At least for me, I wouldn't want this to be an everyday thing. I think it would be sort of a special treat sort of bread that I know I can eat without really spiking my blood glucose, provided I eat it with fat, and it isn't gonna knock me out of ketosis. But I think if I started eating it regularly, it becomes a little bit of a slippery slope. I could see myself wanting to sort of test the waters a little bit further and try maybe another whole grain bread that perhaps isn't sprouted. And who knows where that leads. So I think if you are in a similar place, you probably need to ask yourself, would this fit into a sensible keto lifestyle for you? 
as an occasional treat. So if you found this video at all helpful, please do me a favor and click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already and want to see more videos like this or keto cooking videos, hit that subscribe button, then tap the bell and turn on all notifications. And finally, if you want to help support the Serious Keto Test Kitchen, click that join button down there and see what memberships and perks are all about. Thanks for watching.